Hello and welcome back to the Gfinity Play Like a Legend Championships presented by Xbox One. We've had a couple of games uh, happen now and what do you think of the action so far? Oh, Fair Perry and um, the Greeks look really strong. Yeah. Um, I mean, Fair Perry's had two really, really tough opponents and to be honest, he, he was a bit... I'm not going to say he was lucky against Gorilla because obviously an offside goal, it's not really luck. It's just a um, well, bad attacking play, if you will. But, uh, yeah, him and the Greek, they've been absolutely brilliant. The Greek is just scoring goals for fun. But then again, when you've got a 96 Messi and 95, uh, a 95 Messi and a 96 Ronaldo, sorry, <laughs> what do you expect? What a squad. What yeah. a squad. And that, that group of death, as we're calling it, is really hotting up now. We've got a huge game coming up here between uh, Bruce Granick and a huge gorilla, also known as Spencer. And the loser that will be going out, the winner will be going through. And we spent a little bit of time uh, catching up with Spencer when he came to join us in London. And let's take a look at what we did with a huge gorilla. I'm Spencer from Birmingham and play for XL Esports. Um, when I was younger, um, I was into football a lot. Um, I had an Xbox at the time. Went into one of the game shops, saw FIFA on a shelf and bought it and yeah, loved it ever since. Um, I discovered competitive FIFA around about a year and a half to two years ago. Used to plan some of the competitive websites. Um, had success on them, but the website died down quickly. Uh, didn't play competitive for a while. KSI released a video in, uh, announcing Gfinity. Signed up to it, entered myself into some cups, and yeah, just done well, and the success has carried on from there, really. Um, I qualified for the uh, Spring Masters on the uh, Gfinity website by entering the uh, cups. There's pro points for each cup, so the more you win, the more points you get, and uh, I got a lot of points to qualify, and also, I knew a lot of the players from previous Gfinity events and watching them on the stream. Um, the Spring Masters one was my first event. Uh, my expectations wasn't high, they were just to get out of the groups and then take it from there. At the event there was um, top players, uh, top 16 around the world. I beat a handful of them, making my way to the final and obviously winning it. And yeah, I was surprised when I win, I couldn't believe it. Uh, once I knew I won, didn't sink in for a couple of days after. I went from watching the streams online to competing in an event and becoming the Gfinity Masters champion. For aspiring FIFA players uh, looking to get into the competitive scene, um, I suggest sign up to gfinity.net, enter in as many cups as possible and see how you do and learn off the better players. That was Spencer there, a.k.a. A Huge Gorilla, and he's a great example to anyone watching that maybe hasn't delved into the world of competitive FIFA just yet, they haven't registered yet on gfinity.net. He's exactly why you should be doing that, because just a matter of less, just over a month ago, in fact, he never played at a live event before, came to the Gfinity Spring Masters, won it in his first event, and now, uh, I mean, this weekend in both the events we've had here, he's been tipped as one of the favourites, and uh, he's got a big game coming up here. Do you think he can do it? Uh, yeah, I think he's going to come out in that, like, in, on top in that game. He's a very good player, and to be honest, I don't think he would have been expecting to lose that first game because Ultimate Team, it is his game mode, it's what he's best at. And uh, after getting to the semi finals yesterday, he would have been coming into this really confident, thinking, wow, if I can get to the semi finals on a game mode that I don't even consider myself good at, you know, what can I do when I actually play my main type of game? So, um, yeah, I think he's going to come out on top in that, but I think he will be close. OK, well, he's obviously against Bruce Granick, who's a top quality opponent. They're in their booth now, just getting ready to set things up. And, uh, I mean, either way, whoever goes out and whoever loses this game will be going out. And whoever that person is, it's going to be a bit of an upset, really, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. Bruce is, is more known for, for offline uh, FIFA than, than the Ultimate Team, but still a very good player. Yeah, he's, um, he's a very top player. And to be honest... Um, Pro players, I don't think they'll play Ultimate Team too much, but they'll still play it now and again. And although the game modes are different, it doesn't take that long to adapt to it when you play the game that much. So um, I know he, Bruce does actually play the game quite a lot. So um, Ultimate Team, he, he's going to be like, main to challenge there. Uh, that kind of sounds like he's the underdog. Obviously, he's not the underdog in the game. But yeah, he, um, he definitely uh, uses Ultimate Team quite a lot. So although he's uh, known for his head-to-head -head offline uh, prowess, Ultimate Team hasn't really had many offline tournaments, so yeah. yeah, this this is really a first for like this type of tournament, and it is. yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to want to um, show that he's not just 
the type of player who can um, win on a head to head. He, yeah. he, you know, he's got the full package. He wants to show that he's got the flexibility to move between game modes and still be one of the best. Yeah. And that, again, that's what I love about today's action is it is untrodden ground. We don't know who the best competitive ultimate team player is at these land events. We're going to find out today. He's going to be a first ever champion in this season one event. And the season two champion could be you guys. If you want to get involved, make sure you register in gfinity.net. You could be the next huge gorilla um, if you do well online and qualify for one of these events. And you could even get into our grand final. The winner of today's event will get an automatic uh, route through to the final, essentially, yeah. where there's not only a double uh, the prize pot that's on offer today, but a whole load of amazing, amazing prizes, 100,000 FIFA points, a year's... Uh, a year subscription to EA Access. Uh, you know what the most impressive prize for me in that, if you win the grand final, is you get every legend in FIFA 15. Every yeah. single legend, as well as three legends in FIFA 16 when it comes out. So that's just an unbelievable prize. Money, money can't buy a prize, really, isn't it? That's, yeah, it really is. That's absolutely insane. So um, imagine that, like, yeah. like, how jealous your friends would be if you've got a team of legends. Like, not even a team, every saying, legend. Yeah, There's yeah. like 50. Squads of legends. It's crazy. Yeah. You can have a spare legend. You get three legend squads. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. And the chemistry would be bang on as well because yeah. they all have green links to each other. Oh, think of the possibilities. Anyway, back to the action here. And we've got Epsilon Vinch taking on Alex, uh, who's playing in the Galatasaray. We've got the Galatasaray badge, um, Alex is, and uh, Epsilon Vinch. As um, playing in, in Brazil kit, I think that's Epsilon in the Brazil kit. Yeah, it is. Are yeah. you going to um, try and pronounce that name? Uh, no. Komodo Conquies. <laughs> Komodo Conquies yeah. 3. I'll, I'll do the 3 bit. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Komodo Conquies 3, aka Alex uh, from Wales. And we've got Epsilon Vinge from France playing each other here in a group game. You got a prediction for this one? Um, you know, yesterday I went against Vinge pretty much every time, so this time I'm going to go with him. Um, Alex, he did say before the game he wants to be called Broomy Boy, but we're not going to call How him that. How many names does this guy yeah. want? We talked about this yesterday. Yeah. He thinks he's Prince, the artist formerly known as Alex. That's what I'm going to call him from now on. Yeah, we're not going to call him that. We could Broomy even call Boy. him Liam Gallagher. You know, he looks like him. <sighs> Blood, I'm we, just call him we Alex. need to come up for a name with him. I'm just going to call him Alex. He's going to be Alex. Sorry, yeah. Alex, mate. You've gone, you've gone <laughs> with too many names. Too many names spoil the broth. That's what they say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, Vinge going through here. Ball Ooh. in from De Bruyne. De Bruyne is an interesting option, interesting choice in there. I'm not sure if he's got the... Uh, there's a few decent De Bruyne, De Bruyne options in Ultimate Team. Yeah, he's, um, he's an inform. I he's think got, he's an 85. He's gone with the inform yeah, card. Yeah, he's got an okay. inform. Oh, it's going to be a chance for Bale, is it? No, good defending. But yeah, uh, Aubameyang's an inform as well. OK, very pacey player in there. Bundesliga chemistry, of course. Um, I know, uh, I don't think Alex has got any informs, although he's got some pace up front. He's got Bale and um, Robin. I mean, you know, it's not bad, is it? Yeah, no. Um, the rest of his team is pretty standard, to be honest. Tell you what I'm really liking about Vinci's team right now is, unlike some of the other people we've seen so far, he's respected the rules of chemistry. Yeah. He's got a Bundesliga, at least attacking. I haven't seen his back four just yet, but Luis Gustavo, Schweinsteiger, uh, Farfan on the right, De Bruyne, Aubameyang. He's gone with a Bundesliga team. And not even necessarily the big names in Bundesliga. No Ribbon, no... Uh, Rod Ribbery. No, that was a cross <laughs> between Robin and Ribbery. If they had a yeah. baby together, it would be Ribbon. <laughs> Uh, Ribery and Robin not in there, Lewandowski not in there, Gertz not in there. But he's going with players that are, um, Aubameyang and De Bruyne especially, yeah. uh, are well loved across the ultimate team scene. Well, yeah, I mean, the big names definitely make a difference. Uh, but obviously some people think there's that sort of, uh, hand, like, well, I don't know. Some people think if you're up against a really good team, you've got an average one, the game will even itself out. Yeah. But I'm not really sure about that. Uh, but... I don't that's know, well, that's he's really he's open to interpretation, that one, yeah. isn't it? I mean, some people believe there's a there's a, an advantage gained from fielding a team like that. And ultimately, I mean, ultimately, I, I personally feel, with the exception of the likes of Ronaldo and Messi, who are just heads above everyone else, yeah. it's all kind of few and far between. It really, for me, it still comes down ultimately to how you play on the day. I, I do think there's a, it definitely makes sense to go with good chemistry across the team if you can. But I think if you've got a, oh, yeah, a four-and-a-half-star team or slightly lower-rated team, you should still be able to deal with it. Aubameyang taking his time there on the attack. I mean, Aubameyang, yes, he's not as high rated as someone like yeah. Lewandowski, but pace is so important in this game. If you can play that way, it's yeah. arguably better. That's the only the, the only real bad thing about Aubameyang is, yeah, he's got a lot of pace, but his dribbling's not that good. So it takes yeah. him quite some time to like get the ball under control and that, get to his like top pace. And um, a lot of the time you'll see him and he'll just be like constantly controlling the ball. Just, Wait, and he seems to take forever to get to his top speed. Whereas Ronaldo, on the other hand, he's just he's off. That's it. Can't yeah, catch you, him. Without Bamian, you really want to be playing him 
uh, balls in front of him for him to run onto yeah. as opposed to giving him the ball to feet and trying to dribble with him. Yeah, you know, he's one of them sort of players you want him to have space and uh, through ball for him to arrive onto. Corner here for uh, Epsilon Vinch. Dropping the ball into the box. Marco Royce, oh, it's a lovely oh. turn. And a lovely goal there for Marco Royce, kicking things off. And uh, Marco Royce playing on the left, I think, then in this Bundesliga team. Again, he's playing people in the right positions. He's playing a chemistry, a team full of chemistry. And I respect that. I do respect that. Fair yeah. play to the lad. I mean, we just saw Alex there in his white T-shirt, looking like he's dressed for summer in um, Vinch. Uh, looking quite concentrated, really. <laughs> Yeah, Vinci has definitely started off the better of the two teams here. Yeah. Alex had a great day yesterday, semi-finalist, and actually quite unfortunate not to make the final. And um, not started well today. No, we, uh, I spoke to him yesterday, but Alex obviously had a really good performance in head-to-head, -head and he just said uh, he, doesn't, he, he, he wasn't too confident today coming into autumn team. He doesn't really play it. He didn't think his team was uh, nowhere near good enough to be able to compete. But to be honest, his team isn't really that bad. He's got Cruz here, he's got Gareth Bale. Bale has turned him, it's going to be a goal. Oh, he's missed. That's not gone in. Unbelievable. I would have backed Gareth Bale all on the way to the bank and back on that one. And that's on his left foot as well. There's no way on earth he should have been missing that. It looked like it was destined for the, uh, the right-hand side of the net, but no, and here's Robin on the ball. And he's going to take a little bit of time here. He's going to play it into Kadira in the middle. Isco. And we've got... Uh, Alex has obviously persevered with that team. It's a very Real Madrid-heavy team. But then Robin in there with, with next to no chemistry. In fact, I'm pretty confident it'll be on one chemistry in there. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's basically the Real Madrid team with Robin. Yeah. Obviously with Ed Ronaldo, but yeah. But why... I mean, surely there's got to be someone else other than Robin that you can put in there that's similar sort of cost that's going to have a little bit of chemistry I mean he, he must really favour the skill set that Robin has and we're seeing that skill set hey, now ooh. would Robin with a little bit more chemistry have got away there I think he would it may be on a 5 or a 6 or even a 7 we were going to see Robin get through I thought he was going to get brought down then to be honest like, there's been. a lot of pressure on him we're having a little bit of a break here some changes being made uh, for Epsilon Vinci you can see his team there Boateng and Bernatia centre back Alaba and Pizcek it's a very traditional full chemistry Brazil team 100 chemistry without a doubt everyone playing in their their, their preferred position the no no hybrid pretty pretty plain team there yeah he's um, he's just gone for a basic really hasn't he and it's working well for him he's won the up and you got to think that Royce goal he scored just from, from a he was a tightish angle and yeah. then when you look at the bail chance you got to think that should be 1-1 Neymar has actually come on though for uh, Schweinsteiger so he's actually made a change uh, Schweinsteiger's gone off uh, and also <laughs> okay so what we were just saying about the chemistry in the Bundesliga connection has kind of gone out the window yeah. he's just brought on Neymar and Yaya Torre although Quadrado has come on for Pepe for Alex now that's an interesting change he was playing Pepe at centre back so I don't know what he's done or how he's moved things around yeah. he, he also seeing Aubameyang come on for uh, Alex as well for uh, Benzema so and and Remy Frisco, so lots of changes there. Uh, he's he's left his kind of BBVA setup and uh, changed things up a little bit. So there's a few changes here, and we will we, we'll see that throughout the competition. Um, changes where people are coming on that that wouldn't have got full chemistry in the team beforehand, but they feel like they can do them within the game. Yeah, I think oh, it could be a goal. Ooh, that was a nice little flick pass, but nearly came off. I don't think Bale's going to miss another chance like what he missed earlier. Alex really needs a win here, doesn't he? After losing yeah. that first game to uh, to um, the Greek in such spectacular form. But if he loses, uh, he's out. Simple as that. Yeah, and the Greek is got to be the the bookie's favourite right now. If you're going to give that seen, time. Yeah, from what we've seen, definitely the way he's been playing. I think somebody's just lost their head there. That was a There's definite high, yeah. high boot. <laughs> Gareth Bale on the ball here for uh, Alex, and he is going to play it inside to Cruz. Cruz is going to take his time, Bale. look for the ball oh, back. He might he's make in. it. It could be a goal. That's lovely. Oh, I thought he'd missed again. Gareth <laughs> hey, yeah. Bale gets it, and Alex is uh, not showing too much emotion in there. He's just said a little comment to Epsilon Vinch. Not sure what. Something in Welsh, maybe. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, but he's. Uh, we don't know. Vinch definitely doesn't. He's got <laughs> Epsilon. Uh, yeah, Epsilon Vinch being French, of course. So uh, a language barrier, uh, communication might not be top quality in there. Yeah, but. FIFA is, is, is the language, is, is the world language, really. You don't need to talk. You can let your football yeah. do the talking for you. And Alex has just uh, said something pretty impressive there with that goal. And it's 1 all in the first leg, all to play for between these two very talented FIFA players. Maybe he's trying to um, base a little response out of him, just um, play a bit of mind games. Yeah, that's a good tactic. Like, I mean, oh, that goal was easy. Have you not defended that? Exactly. Yeah. 
And that I, I, really, that's really oh, frustrating. That's good. that's good. And that is Vinci's reply. Yeah. He says, wow, that's what I do, friend. And that's how they <laughs> do it in France. <laughs> And uh, maybe that comment that um, Alex made has come back to bite him. We yeah, don't know. Serves him right. Aubameyang with the finish there. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a personally a big fan of mind games. Yeah. Um, really, really fascinates me the way competitors, especially in this kind of high pressure situation, can try and get in people's heads. And uh, sometimes the smallest thing, a gesture or a comment, can really play on someone's mind yeah. and have huge repercussions. It, it kindly. Uh, I was speaking to him yesterday about his performance and he was even saying he used a little bit of mind games against the players that he was playing. Like he said when he played Bruce, he, uh, I think it might have been, it might have been Bruce, but he just said whenever he was, uh, whenever he'd scored, he'd stand up and cheer and go, like, oh, okay, have you not um, like defended that and just stuff like that. And he, uh, he also said, uh, what did he say? I forgot. Oh, he, against Bruce, he actually went five at the back in the first game, hoping for like a draw because he knew over one game he could beat him but over two he didn't think he could right okay yeah, so and then he he's, went, he he's really put, yeah so game. he's really putting a lot of thought into it and he did exactly what he'd, um, he'd planned like five at the back in the first game got a draw second game went four at the back and one so if only he spent as much time thinking oh, about Robert. his name oh. yeah. just confirming one name uh, would make our lives a lot easier Alex but we'll let you off because you're playing some good FIFA here and uh, we're talking about mind games and kind of tactics that you see in the booth and I, I don't know how how um, how much of a conscious effort it was from Graham yesterday. But I was fascinated particularly with him. By far the most emotive, the most uh, reactionary player we've seen. He, whether he concedes or scores, we're going to see Graham later on Ooh, today. Uh, could, could be a goal. Could be a goal. It's going to be a goal. It yeah, is a goal. Another weeks. goal for Gareth Bale. See if he says anything. Alex has made it 2 all now. Nah, he didn't say anything that no. time. I feel like we need to introduce him like a boxing match. I mean, You know, when the, the boxers come out and I'm like, Go through about ten different names. There is, yeah, we do. You know, there is similar kind of uh, like aspects of this from the kind of fighting world. You know, it's like the comments and things, the little digs you can make at each other. They yeah. can have a big effect on things. And uh, as I was saying with Graham, who we're going to see later on Ooh. in the tournament, not another swift reply. Oh, it is wow. as soon as Alex scores, Vinch goes forward and scores. It's almost like he's toying with him. He's saying, "I'm not going to score unless I need to. As soon as I need to, I yeah. will." <laughs> That's top quality FIFA. As you said yesterday, you make your most vulnerable when you score. And exactly. that's proved, uh, well, proved itself to be true right in this game. Alex particularly is vulnerable when he scores. We've seen that. And this is an action-packed game. In the first leg, we've already seen five goals. We could see a sixth here. Robert. It's a ball in. He never fancy him to win others, do you? No. Although, I'm not going to lie, he scored a few against me. And he really does get to you. It's not the, not, ooh, no. ooh, it's not the nicest way to score a Robin header. Well, no, I'll but a goal sorry. is a goal. Yeah, yeah, goal. <laughs> good point, boy. It's not nice when it's scored against you, I can tell you that. Especially when he's out jumping players like yeah, Ramos. very frustrating. They don't do their job. That's yeah. what they're there to do. Has he got Aubameyang on the wing as well? Uh, no, Alex Ooh. Vicky has. Right, it's that header from the keeper there. Put under pressure with a hospital pass from his defender. And that could have gone very wrong for Vinch. And I have to say, as talented as Vinch is, yesterday we saw a fair few defensive errors from him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, on this game, he's on FIFA 14, he was really dominant. It's heated him. But on this game, I think the, the, uh, there's been such a big change in styles that, I don't know, he just hasn't found his um, perfect way of playing yet. So You can't expect to be, you know, each different iteration of, of FIFA to suit you perfectly. It does tend to happen. It comes, in, it comes in waves and one game will be perfect for one person yeah. and then someone else in the community will step up their game the next one. And but That's one of the great things about FIFA and particularly with, with newcomers to the competitive scene is that because there is a new game uh, every year, you've kind of got an opportunity to catch up. Yeah. It's not like you know one game that stays the same for tens of years and you have to try and get good at it and, and catch up with the guys that are you know, at the top of the, the ladder, so to speak, you can actually have a, a really quick way of catching up, which is just concentrating on the new uh, version of the game. It's put, putting some time into it and practicing. We've got free kick here from Bale. Ooh, what, what was, I don't I'm know sure what he was, he was trying there. Yeah, but the thing is with FIFA, a lot of pros, um, they'll try and play the next version of the game, like the previous version. And yeah. that doesn't work because the game changes each year, which I think that's why a lot of people have struggled this year, like in terms of pros. And you've had a lot of newcomers like burst onto the scene because the newcomers are not really afraid to change it. They'll just do what they have to do to win. Whereas um, the pros will do what they're used to. And um, obviously FIFA 14, it's, it's a big difference to this. There's a lot of changes. Obviously crossing was a big part of the game. And on this crossing is, um, I'm not going to say it's, completely useless because he does work but just nowhere near as much and just a style of play so yeah I think a lot of pros will try and play like FIFA 14 and it just doesn't work like that 
How long would you say a uh, time you need when a new game comes out to adapt to it? How long, like a sort of feeling out process where you learn the, the things that work and the things that don't work about the new game? It depends what, you, like, what you're going for. If you're, uh, if you're trying to make your style of play work and you're forcing it onto the game, it can take, up, it can take months. But if you're going to it with an open mind thinking, right, uh, let's look for what, the, uh, what works, what doesn't, I'll change, completely change my game style, then, you know, it can only take about a month, maybe even less, three weeks. But, yeah, it just, just depends on, like, the way you are, how hey, you want to approach the game. OK, we've seen the full-time whistle in that one, a 3-2 to Epsilon Vinch. Uh, a tight, tight game. Uh, the negative on, apart from being down, obviously, Aubameyang getting man of the match there, the negative from Alex's point of view is that every time he scored, he did let one in straight away. So he needs to cut that out because he's going to have to catch up with at least one goal in the second leg. See them in the booth there. Alex in the white shirt and Epsilon Vinch, you can just see the top of his uh, snazzy haircut there. <laughs> it yeah. is uh, behind the screen. Two different contrasting haircuts here. Yeah. <laughs> Two contrasting personalities. Yeah. Um, and contrasting game styles as well, you could say. So much yeah. contrast. Alex definitely looks like he's dressed, to, dressed for summer. Yeah. Um, Casual. Vinch has got a big thick coat on, but then again, he's got some shorts on as well. Looks like he's about to skateboard he's, he's from France. What part uh, of France is he from? Maybe he's from somewhere it's a lot warmer than it is here. We've had lovely weather this week, but we've not been uh, blessed with it this weekend, no. which is why the people here in the Gfinity Arena in London are away from the uh, not that nice weather in the shelter yeah. of our lovely screen here. And if you've never been, and you need, you need to come down to this place. It really is an amazing place to watch and play FIFA. You can go to gfinity.net forward slash tickets to uh, find out about all the events coming up. And you can probably still come down today if you're in the London area and you fancy seeing some top quality ultimate team. Yeah, you can, you can definitely come down today. So um, it'd be good to see some more faces here. We've got quite a few guys in the uh, audience there watching and uh, enjoying what we've seen so far. Have you been enjoying it? Yeah, we've seen some brilliant um, football on play so far. Every game's been packed full of goals as well, which to be honest is what I expect of ultimate team. It's such a fast paced game mode. It's been brilliant to watch. And I think there's just so many different facets. I've talked about it today already, but so many different elements of Ultimate Team that make this uh, a little bit more complicated a tournament, I'd say. Not in a bad way, but just there's so many different elements that can make someone win or lose, as opposed to when you have, particularly in a normal head-to-head -head tournament, two of the same team against each other, a direct you know, Real Madrid versus Real Madrid, for example. We're never going to see that here. It's very, very unlikely we'll see the same 11 against the same 11 I'd say it's impossible. It's not impossible, obviously, but I don't yeah. think we're going to see it. No, I don't think we'll see it. Yeah, with Real Madrid, Real Madrid, a lot of the time it's a stalemate, and it's usually, it's usually decided by a mistake yeah. or you know yeah. like something that you can't really help. Whereas, yeah, I doubt that we're going to see the t like two of the same teams against each other. And even if we did, it'd probably be a different formation or someone being in a different position or just something like that. Because each player, they will have um, got players in their team that work for them. But it, just because it works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for another, which is why we've seen so many different teams. Definitely, definitely. And then uh, we're going to see the second leg of that game shortly. But based on the first leg, where Epsilon Vinch got a narrow 3-2 victory, would you say that he's going to go on and win that, that game in, in, in total? Um, well, I said he was going to win it before, so I'm going to stick with that. But um, it's a, it's an hard one to call because Alex, he had a couple of chances. I mean, I, that Gareth Bale miss was absolutely um, incredible. He was ridiculous, especially with the chance that Royce um, scored like two minutes before he. But yeah, um, I'd, I'd say Vinci is going to win it, but I don't think he's going to be by a lot. You can see Vinci in the booth there. Uh, he's your favourite then, but it's going to be tight. And obviously, I'd, I'd say personally, based on what we've seen so far, that the one to watch at the moment has got to be uh, the Greek, who yeah. looks. He was good yesterday, quarter finalist, but today. He's scoring goals for fun, particularly with Ronaldo. Anyone with a strike force of Ronaldo and Messi, I think, mean, inform Ronaldo and record breaker Messi. Yeah, I'd just say they're not even just normal Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> I mean, they're like scary enough, but yeah. a, a 95 and a 96, absolutely incredible. It's almost impossible to get a better strike force. I think you could only go with a 99 Ronaldo team of the year. And uh, I think um, there's, there's a couple, there's a team of the year Messi, I think, which is higher as well. But yeah. um, other than that, it's pretty much the best strike force on, on statistically speaking anyway, you can get in the game. And uh, it's working really well. Yeah, it is. For the He's, Greek. He, um, he won his first game 5-2 and his second game 4-1. So that's nine goals in two games. Lots He's, of goals. Uh, yeah. And uh, if you guys aren't familiar with exactly how the tournament's working today, we can show you some information on that and the structure of how things are going to go. Obviously, we've got four groups of four players here. You can see it on the screen now. And uh, we've got two people going out of each group. So 
We'll end up with eight team, eight players in a quarter-final situation through to the semi-final and then ov obviously into the final. We've seen a few legends used so far. We've seen Vieira, Roberto Carlos, um, um, Beckenbauer we've seen used. And there's a max rule on legends, three legends max per team. So we'll, I'm sure we'll see some more, maybe the likes of Akotcha, who's a big fan favourite with the five-star skill moves. And in terms of the money up for grabs, the winner today will get himself $4,000 a featured legend, which is a brand new legend, not even in the game yet, I believe, which is Roy Keane. Yeah. Um, 20,000 FIFA points and uh, 12 uh, EA Access um, prize as well. And if you think about it, the other thing that's not actually written down here is that winning today actually gets you a qualification automatically for our grand final in August. And that featured legend and that 20,000 FIFA points could be really helpful yeah. in that final because obviously they've improved their team. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean... From the, some of the teams we've got today, it, they seem near impossible to improve because they're already absolutely, you know, up there with the best. But yeah, having 20k FIFA points, open a few packs, and maybe even like the Greek could get a legend at centre back just to improve well, his team that little bit more. Let's not forget a massive, uh, not spanner in the works, but a massive thing coming up is, is team of the season. Yeah. So we, we there is no team of the season announced yet, so we haven't got any on display. But in the future tournaments, we've got one in June, July, and the final in August they're going to be in play. People yeah. will be using those those blue players that people like. I'm not sure if they're blue this year, but yeah. the team of the season. And um, we don't know exactly who's going to be in there yet, but there'll be some of the big names for sure. Yeah, definitely. And You'd think so anyway. And that, that 20,000 FIFA points could be could be huge in that. Uh, not only to mention the winner of the grand final in August gets 100,000 FIFA points, <laughs> as well as every legend in the game and three legends for FIFA 16. And the good thing about the 100,000 FIFA points is that, um, I mean, that's just... A ridiculous amount of points. Yeah. Like the amount of packs you can open with that. that I mean, even if you don't yeah. pack someone amazing, the, the value of it when yeah. you sell on the people you do get, you'll yeah. be able to get someone you're unbelievable. Gonna, you're gonna have so many coins, and again, yeah. Uh, when we come back to the um, tournament in August, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a lot of um, team of the seasons and teams being improved. But as I did say, it will be hard for some of them to improve here. But like the Greek, he's got an amazing attacking force, but the rest of his team, you know, it could be improved. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how, well, the winner improves their teams. Don't forget, you could be like the example we used earlier, which is Spence or a huge gorilla. You could be playing here in the next season two, as we're calling it, uh, Play Like a Legend Championships. All you've got to do, go to gfinity.net. If you haven't already registered, register on there. Look for the qualifiers. There's a number of different events you can uh, actually qualify through. So you don't have to just play in one if you're busy on that day or whatever. You can find one that suits your busy diary and then uh, qualify through and you can be here taking on some of the world's best FIFA players you know literally playing Bruce Granite who's won hand uh, I don't know more titles than you can count on one hand yeah uh, or someone like Spencer who's relative new, relatively new to the sport but uh, doing very well that could be you so loads of potential for for more winners to come we're going to have a season one winner today we're going to have a season two winner in June season three winner in July and then the grand final winner in yeah. August and that's that's going to I mean today we're going to have essentially the, the first ever ultimate team competitive uh, live event winner yeah. that's a big deal to have that on your on your CV and then you know we're going to have a few more season winners and then we're going to have a grand final winner who's going to be considered the best ultimate team player basically in the world yeah I mean Definitely. The players here are the best players in the world. That make no mistake about it. They're all absolutely incredible. So, like, you should just appreciate, like, the um, play that you're seeing because it might not look like it's amazing to, like, the viewers at home, but when you take into account, like, the, the quality of the two players playing each other, that's when you really, like, get a sense or a feel for just how good they are. Exactly. I mean, we're going to have a really interesting spread of people playing in the future seasons as well. We're going to have people from different regions representing yeah. that region. We're going to have some people from France. We're going to have, obviously, UK uh, players. We're going to have guys from Germany, uh, uh, Switzerland and Austria, uh, Portugal, Spain and um, uh, Italy also represented there. Someone from the Nordic region of, of Europe and then other people from Europe as well. So we're going we're to get an amazing spread of European talent. So if you, if you are from one of those uh, slightly further afield countries and you feel like you haven't got a chance, you have, there are going to be representatives from your region playing. There's no reason it cannot be you. And likewise, if you're worried about the costs of getting involved in a tournament like this, it's all covered. Travel and accommodation is covered for all qualifiers. And obviously you've got a chance of picking up some uh, wonderful prize money as well. So we're underway here. But with a big, big game between Bruce Granick and Huge Gorilla. This is essentially a knockout match. Whoever loses is out, whoever wins is through. Put you on the spot, who's going to do it? Um, Spencer. You're going he's, with Spencer. Yeah, he's my pre-tournament um, favourite, so I can't really change that now. 
But as you said earlier, whoever loses this game is going to be a big shock for them going out. Yeah, I believe the term you use is grouped. You don't want to be grouped. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to get grouped. <laughs> if you're grouped, it means you went out of the group stage, basically, yeah. yeah. It just makes it sound like a little bit worse than going out early in a tournament. No, you got grouped. Sounds like something was done to you. Yeah, 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 grouped, yeah, yeah. you got grouped. Like <laughs> okay, huge gorilla on the ball. That's uh, Spencer here in the purple kit. Uh, not used that kit previously. I think he's changed it up. He didn't like it. And he's going to go with this slightly different um, display here. And um, we've got Carl Walker on the ball for huge gorilla. Uh, Ramirez in the middle. What, what a favourite he is. Some people say he's the best player in the ultimate team. Pound for pound. Obviously, he's not yeah. going to score the goals when Aldo gets you. But in terms of the amount of money he costs and the job that he does, box-to-box -box player, yeah. you can't really argue with it. For me, he's outstanding. Yeah, he's, um, he's my favourite player on the game, not just Ultimate Team, just because he, he gets everywhere. He's brilliant. He's fast. And, uh, you know, he's got a decent shot on him. He can score. But, uh, you know, I, I could accept that, that he's, one of the, well, one of the best. I'm not going to say the best, but, yeah, I'd, I'd say he's one of the best on Ultimate Team, especially in his position. Yeah, and I think, exactly, in his position. And it's also, oh, that's a mistake from the goalkeeper. He's giving it away to Willie Ann. Can he pounce on it? Storage is not Ooh. going in. What a save. What a recovery yeah. from a De Gea in goal there, who initially did a terrible piece of distribution there. And he's someone of Bruce's experience. You wouldn't expect him to make a mistake, so... Uh, no, definitely not. And it's a corner here for Spencer. He goes short. Willian's going to cross it in. Can he get ahead on it? It's going to fall to Daniel Sturridge. He needs to get it on that favoured left foot. Ramirez plays it into Andrew Schurler making an appearance here. I'm guessing it's going to be the Chelsea card version. Yeah. Obviously, he's now moved to uh, Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga, but formerly uh, before January had a, had a Chelsea version available. Yeah, he's another, I think he's another favourite on Ultimate Team. Um, yeah. Fast paced, um, actual left mid as well, Premier League obviously. I mean, he's not as good as Hazard, but he's quite a lot cheaper. So, uh, yeah, um, he before I got Hazard in my squad, Sherlock was always the one filling in in that um, area of the pitch. Decent pace for yeah. someone that's quite tall, I think he's six foot tall. Yeah, a, a few options. So, there. yeah, he gives you a bit more options in attack. Is this going to be? Oh. Ooh. See, a lot of players would have just gone for the head of them with Benzema, but Bruce is left. He's hoping Benzema's going to control it down and work a better chance, but Benzema just let it go past him, unfortunately. It's gone Still short from the yeah. corner. Ooh. Those hanging balls are never an enjoyable thing to face as a defender in this game. Yeah, you just never know what's going to happen. Here's Kyle Walker to Di Maria. He's going to spread it to the other wing. Andre Scherler's not going to make it, though. It's annoying when that happens. Still 0-0 here, 23 minutes into this first leg. It's essentially a knockout game. The loser of this game will be going out. Is this, a, is this the second leg? It says 1-0 at the bottom. I've yeah, it is a second. The second leg, um, OK. Oh, we, di we didn't have the first game on there, but yeah. No. Oh, yeah, of course, it was taking place during the other one. Yeah. So it's 1-0 here, so it's essentially the same as 0-0. It's a draw. If it stays like this at the end of this match, it will go to the third match, silver yeah. goal. And it, unless someone gets a, a goal between now and the 90th minute, 87% pass percentage for a Spencer, huge gorilla. This is Ronaldo. And uh, FC Ooh. Spank. What a name that is for yeah. Bruce there. <laughs> FC it's Spank. one of those names that make you want to win just because of the name. Oh, yeah. yeah you, when you see your upcoming opponent. Yeah, and it's still got a name and it just annoys you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, FC Spank is an quite an annoying one. Yeah, you see a lot of beast. I, I see beast in people's names quite a lot, and that, that, that just annoys me. I'm like, why you, why you got that in the name? Get that late name. <laughs> and uh, he makes me play that little bit harder just to try and humiliate them. But yeah, uh, FC Spank is definitely in that category. It would annoy you just seeing that. Then again, it's his nickname. He calls himself Bruce Spank Granek. But for per is that for a FIFA thing or is it personal in his own time? Uh, that, that's no. his official FIFA oh, okay. title. Okay, good. Yeah. Just checking. Uh, Clichy at left back here. <laughs> Clichy's going to play inside to Mathieu, the French, his fellow Frenchman. And Griezmann, another Frenchman. We've got. To, I really do appreciate the representation that Bruce has given to his homeland here. Yeah, he's even got Vieira in there as well. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? He could have had Robert Perez. Man, could true. have had Desailly. Um, trying to think for any other French legends. I think oh. that might be oh, it. Oh, he's going to have a chance with Perez. Oh, oh good. A just a last-minute block. Still not really made sure though by the keeper. It was a bit of a. If he had a striker there to to, to uh, pounce on that, it could have been deadly. Di Maria, oh, unnecessary back heel there. So he's a flair player, Di Maria. He's sometimes a bit of a luxury. Oh, Ronaldo's going to be through. Oh, he wanted that a bit more like central, like the ball going diagonal towards goal, just so he could 
run onto it and get a shot off, but the way the ball was going, there's no way he could shoot from an angle like that. He's, he's worked it well, he hasn't rushed it. Ball in. Gareth Bale, Benzema! Ooh. I thought that was going to be one of those ones that just loops behind the keeper yeah. uncontrollably, but yeah, it was over and it's a goal kick. Good header there from uh, Daniel Sturridge. But Vieira collects it and that's what he does in there. He's just um, oh, he's mopping things up like a janitor in there. Spencer's pressed him well there with William. Is he? Oh, no, I thought he was going to come out with the ball there. Perez. Oh, it's a poor pass from Perez. It's not what you're in there to do, Perez, but it's, it's gathered well from Matthew. But a lot of possession here with Spencer. Deep in, um, in FC Spank's half. Uh, Van Arnhold's a silver card. And we yeah. talked about this in the preview show. We haven't seen many silver cards. In fact, it might even be the first silver card we've seen today. Yeah, it's, it's just a pace for him. He's, yeah, very he's got a lot of pace, yeah. And uh, even though I know it's not going to happen, whenever like there's that situation, I think, oh god, that ball's going to bounce over the keeper. Yeah. It's just the keepers never look confident. Uh, well, oh, no, a bit heavy. Has he got look, Ronaldo on? I don't know if he has. It's very difficult in this game, I think, to uh, accurately put enough pressure on the through balls. It's yeah. very easy to overplay them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they are hard to judge because. Sometimes you'll, uh, a lot of through balls on this are overhit by quite some distance. That's why a lot of the times I'll just go running through to the keeper. So um, yeah, having judging the power on the through balls is something that it's it's hard to do because it's so inconsistent. You just never know what's going to happen with it. Um, Bruce just making changes. Is Bruce? Marco Royce and Lacazette on for Benzema and Griezmann. So he's dropped yeah. two of his Frenchmen. Uh, he's brought in another Frenchman in Lacazette, who's uh, actually scored now for the national team, uh, only making his debut recently. Marco Royce on the left-hand side. French uh, French squad's got Ooh. some really talented youngsters coming through, haven't they? Yeah, Spence has just brought on Robin and Ronaldo. Wow. Yeah. Robin and Ronaldo, only leaving it till half-time to bring on Ronaldo. I know. Uh, but here come the Cavalry. Let's yeah. see what he can do now. Both uh, team of the year. There's Robin winning a header against Ramos. <laughs> Both having Team of the Year cards, of course. I'm not sure if these are the Team of the Year cards, but um, they're still quality, even if it's just the, the basic version. Ronaldo. It's nice. Yeah. It's very nice. Spencer's used him. He's brought him off the bench. Oh, wow. That's oh, unselfish. Yeah. That's great providing from Ronaldo. And I think he set it up for Robin, didn't he? It was the two yeah. substitutes coming on. Immediate impact. <laughs> a managerial masterstroke from a huge gorilla there. Two of the arguably most selfish players in football there combining. So... Yeah, uh, good team management from Spencer, but then again, I, I'm not quite sure why you'd start those on the bench. Oh, well, not bringing them on earlier in yeah. the game at least, yeah. yeah. Ronaldo to Ramirez. Ramirez has done well. Just not found the pass through. And as things stand, Spencer will be going through to the knockout stages and Bruce Granick will be knocked out in the group. Oh, a big shock that'd be. But then again, obviously, there's going to be a shock here. It's a good ball for Perez. De Gea collects it well. Good positioning from the keeper there. Are you a De Gea or a Courtois man? Courtois. Yeah. Yeah, you answered that quickly, so you. Oh, he, he, uh, both in, in the game and in real life. Okay. Van Arnholt, the silver left back, plays it down the line to Robin. Robin to Di Maria. I said, Look, right. I thought it was a part. I wasn't sure if that was a touch or a pass there. Di Maria's going to look to provide it. Whatever it's it gone was, back. It's worked out well. Ball in. It's a goal. Yeah. It's a goal. He's not offside this time either. He's not. Yeah. And those substitutions are paying dividends for Spencer. A goal for each of the guys he's brought on. I mean, what can you say? What a header. Yeah. What's a header from Ronaldo? Look, oh, I'm pretty, he's going to shield the game up there, Spencer. As I say, he's really good on Ultimate Team. And now he's got Ronaldo and Robin on the pitch. He's showing. In the first half, he didn't really do much. Well, is he gonna, oh, that's well cut out yeah. there from centre back. I think if Bruce... Oh, oh lovely. Yeah. If Bruce wants a chance in this, he needs to get back into it pretty soon. Robin, can he find Ronaldo? You think he might? That's that through ball again, just yeah. not quite measured correctly. Ooh. De Gea, what's going on here with that distribution from Bruce? You've got to be... You've got to be... It's like he's nervous, Bruce. That. It's not like him. We've made some like, silly little errors in his defence like that. It's the second time he's done something like that now. It's not really like him. Marco calls himself Ross. the machine. Yeah, no, no emotion on yeah. display. Usually so solid and lacking any kind of errors. But he's made a few here. Yeah. Lacazette off the bench. And he's not done as well as the other guys that have come off the bench for Spencer have done. Di Maria on the ball for Spencer. He's, he loses it to Lacazette. He plays it to Marco Royce. He's oh, also come nice. off the bench. He's going to score. Oh, oh no. Wow. He's on his weak foot. Still, though, I would you could have finessed that in the yeah. bottom left. And if you're wondering why those instructions there come up in French, we are seeing... Um, Bruce's feed, and as a French, 
player. Yeah. He's got his Xbox setting set to be French, as you'd expect. Here's DeMarcos on the ball for Spencer. Gives it to Gareth Bale. Loses it, but DeMarcos gets it back. What's going on there? There's a pile up on the M3. <laughs> Perez has got the ball here. He's giving it to Vieira. Vieira's going to go inside to Marco Royce. Royce uh, misplaces his pass there, and uh, Spencer's got a chance to make it 3 0 on the break. If he can find that ball, he's looking for it for Ronaldo. You can see Ronaldo pointing to where he wanted the pass to be played, but uh, couldn't find it in the end. And still 2 0 here. 20 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, Spencer's he's going to play like that now. Bruce can like, attack as much as he wants. and. When you've got Robin and Ronaldo up front, Spencer's going to be happy to just like sit back, defend it out, and when he get, does get the ball, just, you know, came to attack as quick as he can to get the ball to Ronaldo or Robin, and he'll be through. And if he gets a third, I think that'll be game over. Another very dodgy uh, kick there from, from Bruce in goal. And we've had a goal in the other team there, uh, in the other game, sorry. Kevin De Bruyne with the goal, I think, for Epsilon Vinch. And uh, that's a, that's a, Epsilon Vinch has been top quality today. Other than, other than against the Greek, yeah, he has been. Uh, he started off slow, but he, after seeing that first game and now he's taking the lead in the second, he's really came into it, um, showing why he's a world champion. We're going to stay with this game, though. Uh, as things stand, with 15 minutes left, Spencer is booking himself a place in the knockout rounds uh, at the expense of Bruce Granick, who uh, was actually... I mean, when we, when we did our preview show, I think these were the two guys we both predicted resp uh, respectively to win yeah however we didn't know the group at that point we no. didn't know they were going to be in the same group and yeah. uh so by different. the looks of it i can't remember who predicted who though uh, i don't think yeah. it's important really i'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure we, i predicted spencer but uh, we yeah, shouldn't we'll, dwell on the details though should we we'll wait to yeah. find those yeah, let's not dwell on them <laughs> uh because some substitutions here for bruce who needs two goals very quickly um which he's brought on uh royce is he brought on i think yeah, and uh, bruce royce is already, already on wasn't yeah. he i'm not sure who's brought on there if he's brought anyone on at all He's changing his custom tactics, check, um, putting his pressure and um, aggression up. Um, I didn't know, you, didn't know you spoke French. <laughs> <laughs> How did uh, you figure that one out? Uh, Aggressive and pression. <laughs> well, you're a linguist. Yeah, I'm secretly um, French, but I did, yeah, he's uh, it David. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's taking his pressure and aggression up, so his team, uh, the pressure makes his team push up the pitch, and obviously his aggression makes his players charge, um, charge down his opponents a lot quicker. So. It's basically just like the same as the high pressing tactic, but of his custom uh, attacking uh, tactics in there as well. And there's no goal difference here, so it really does make no difference if he loses 10-0 or 2-0. Yeah. If he loses, he loses and he's out. If he wins, he's through. So he might as well throw caution to the wind, and if he concedes more goals, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. That. I mean, I remember a, a, a certain Jerry Barton interview. Mm. I'm not sure whether it was the one where he's putting on the strange accent, but... He was speaking about a French team when he was at Marseille. He said they were celebrating because they lost 1-0 with 10 men. He's like, what's the point in celebrating a 1-0 loss? If you're going to lose 1-0, you might as well lose 5-0, but at least try. And I mean, uh, in that case, it might have been goal difference, to uh, be fair. Because uh, in the league, obviously, it can make a difference. But, uh, but yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, I suppose. But uh, I mean, if you're going to lose, you might yeah. as well lose and try, rather than just lose and not look. Yeah, in that case, because yeah. they had 10 men, they would have played uh, quite negatively, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, almost uh, Robin almost ran onto that ball there, but the keeper came out and uh, just five minutes left. Oh, Bruce needs to score now if he's going to get back side, in this. Yeah. But no, he's not offside, sorry. But no, it's not looking good for Bruce. I think we're going to be saying goodbye to uh, a legend of the competitive FIFA scene, but let's face it, in the ultimate team competitive scene, he is not a legend. Not because no one yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very new, so you know, these are legends in the making. They are playing like a legend, yeah. <laughs> you might say. Yeah. Gareth Bell's hit it. If that had gone in, it would have been a nail-biting finish. Yeah. But it didn't go. It didn't even go on target. And uh, that's pretty much Bruce done and dusted, I think. Spencer's going to go through. And uh, the pre-tournament favourite, according to Dave, could remain the favourite. Yeah, the pre-tournament favourite, according to um, Spencer. Looks like he's going out. I mean, to be fair, I actually was going to go with Spencer as well. But you went oh, said you it first. This now. I don't no, you said it first. Come on, you were there. You remember this. I, I'm pretty sure I heard you like, pick this your choice first. This is why I don't make predictions. <laughs> I ask you to make the predictions. Right, here we yeah. go. We oh, could have a last-minute yeah. goal for Spencer making uh, it 3-0. But no, game there over. is the final whistle. Spencer has done it. And uh, sadly, we say goodbye to Bruce Granick. He's knocked out of the Ultimate Team tournament. And uh, Spencer continues to make a name for himself in this scene. He does, but he didn't start very well. I mean, he, he had to win that to go through. He was very close to going in after losing his first game against Fur Perry. Yep. 
We had a goal in the other game as well. I don't know if we can go over to it to show you guys uh, some of the action, but it's just gone one all in that second leg there. Uh, with Epsilon Vinch conceding, and uh, it's game on in the second leg. Yeah, I think that's now uh, Vinch is just winning by the one goal now. Yeah. Is that 4-3 um, overall, I think it might be. Very I'm pretty tight. sure he's just winning by the one goal, but yeah. Aubameyang on the ball for Vinch here. Got to be careful. Oh, could have given away a penalty easily yeah. there. Just tugging him down, but let's see what... Oh, he's got it. Oh, it's going to be a goal. Free. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. That is wonderful. You know what we've seen again there? We've seen Vinch score again after conceding against a yeah. different uh, opponent. No, it was against Alex before, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. every time. Uh, every time Alex has scored against Vinch. Every single time, Vinch has scored straight away. Yeah. Alex has scored three goals against Vinch over the two legs, and every single time, it's been immediately replied with what we call a swift reply. Yeah, I mean, from, I think, uh, surely you'd Vinch. think he would have uh, noticed what was going on by now, Alex, and tried to stop it, but... But obviously he's not doing it intentionally. But uh, no, but he's yeah. not shutting up the shop, is he? No, he's. Uh, the thing is, even though he's scoring, he's still behind. So when he makes it one-one, he's still actually behind overall. So he's still going for it because obviously he can't just sit back. Uh, see, so yeah, let. Oh, that's definitely not what Vince would have wanted. Dear five Maria. three on aggregate it is. Yeah, to, uh, five Vinch three right now. now. Vince playing in the yellow Brazil strip. Uh, team name DRX and uh, Alex playing in the red and white stripes. STA is his team name. There's still time for Alex to get back in. He's, he's obviously scored three over these two games already. So, yeah. you know, he, he can score, but that's like, I think he's got, um, looks like he might have Aubameyang up front there. Um, and Quadrado out on the right. He needs two goals in 20 minutes to uh, stay in the tournament, yeah. I believe, because yeah, he's, he's lost already earlier in the game. Or it's going to be an early trip home. Back to Wales. Yeah. Benzema on the ball for Alex. Can he make something happen? Can he fashion something? We could concede another one and it really would be lights out. Yeah. I think if Vince gets the next goal, then that's going to be game over. If there is the next goal, it's going to be important, put it that way. Tony Cruz is a good ball through to Benzema. He's onside. Benzema looking for Robin. Oh, free. Got away no, with that. he's, he's got away down. With it. Yeah. He has that sort of diving trait, Robin, doesn't he? He loves yeah. to go to ground. <laughs> oh, is he in? That's a ball. Albamian could make coming. it conclusive. Yeah. Keepers off his line. Got to do the chip. Surely he's not done it. He didn't need to do it. It's 3 1, and it's game over. Vinch is taking the points here, and we're going to be saying goodbye to Alex, I think, as a result of this loss. Yeah, I mean, he's not played particularly well, especially compared to what he did yesterday. So he's going to be disappointed, but at the same time, he, he's not really deserved to win this game. He didn't deserve to win against a Greek either. So he, although he will be disappointed, he can't be too um, disheartened. Could get a goal back here. Oh, oh good hands from Weidenfeller there. Oh, he's throwing it straight to oh. his opponent, though. What is that from Vinge again? We've seen defensive errors from Vinge, and it's why, despite this good performance, I, I, oh, oh, God. Yeah. despite this poor performance, I can't see Vinge winning it today. No. Not with the defensive errors he'd be making. No, if he he's already came up against Greek and he's been punished for all of them, so um, you'd have to think if he came up against the Greek again or someone with that sort of attacking calibre in the team, yeah, you you couldn't really fancy him. But then again, um, you do learn from your mistakes, so let's. Does he, See, though? Because he was making his mistakes yeah. yesterday. I worry about him. I do. Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, he's, he's going to be going through at this rate. So, um, but he will be going through in seconds. So, he's going to be playing um, someone who tops a different group. Yes. So, yeah. Slightly less advantageous to yeah, go through a second, of definitely. course. Definitely. And uh, we're seeing some decent build-up play here from Alex. But he, he does need three goals. And he's got five minutes, so it is too late for the guy, I think, unfortunately. Yeah, this is where you need a very, very strong mentality. On FIFA, it's so important because, as we saw yesterday in that Spencer versus... Uh, that, yeah, Spencer versus Graham, sorry. Graham was 2 up in silver goal in about the 38th minute, so Spencer had seven FIFA game minutes to score two. Not only did he score two, but on the 45th minute, the last kick of the game hit the post. So seven minutes, you could have scored three goals and turned it round and won. If you weren't tuned in for that match yesterday, guys, you missed what I would say is at least in my uh, what I've witnessed the best competitive FIFA match I've ever seen yeah it was ridiculous I mean um, Spencer actually went on to lose as well the yeah. golden goal was quite it? coming yeah. back time and time again Alex has got the ball here it would be good if he can get a consolation goal on his way out of the tournament a swan song if you will but um, it could be the opposite Vince could got the other end here and 
and really put a dagger in the back. But I don't think he needs to, to be honest. I think he's going to pay for possession. He knows he's through. He's got a free goal lead here. And uh, he looks pretty solid. There it is. Yeah. Final whistle. It's all over. Vinch gets the points. And I think Alex is going to be uh, leaving the competition after that one. Yeah, straight home there for him, I think. I mean, as I said, he's... Yeah, he's obviously not going to be happy, but he can't be too disappointed because he didn't really particularly play very well. He didn't really deserve anything out of that. So. No, I mean, the fact that he was scoring goals but then conceding again straight afterwards, it's going to be annoying. But uh, you've got to be able to defend better than that. Yeah, I know. He, um, he defended pretty well yesterday, to be honest. Um, but no, today, it's a different day. So well, it's Different game. Yeah. Different game mode, yeah. I should say. Same game, different game mode. So there you have it. We know that uh, Bruce is out. We know that Vinch is going through. We know that Spencer's going through and we know that uh, Alex is going to be leaving us as well. So it's, it's really interesting for me because we're seeing some people that didn't necessarily uh, do amazingly well yesterday do well and yeah. vice versa. We're seeing guys that did well leave the competition quite early. Alex was a, a semi-finalist yesterday, was yeah. he not? And now he's gone in the group. Yeah, I know. Alex, he won all his group games. I'm pretty sure he... Um yeah, he did, and got, as you said, he got to the semi-final and for Perry yesterday, lost his first two games, and today he's came in and he's won his first two against um, two very, very tough opponents in Bruce and Spencer. So, yeah, different game modes. It seems to be suiting dip players differently. Well, Spencer may still remain the pre-match favourite. He has lost the game today, yeah. and that can't be said for Fair Perry, and it can't be said for the Greek, who both, for me, look on form, the guys to beat in this ultimate team mode at least. Uh, we can show you some of the results on the screen now of everything that's happened so far. We've, we've uh, had a fair few games so far. You can see the scores at the top of the screen there. You can see beneath them the games we still have to come. So to clarify, Fair Perry uh, beat Bruce Granick 3-1 and then he won again against a huge gorilla booking his place in the knockout round. Huge gorilla then beat Bruce, knocking Bruce out and uh, sending Spencer through. And then we had a game against Alex versus the Greek who, who did very well in that one, the Greek 5-2 win for him. Then he won 4-1. Uh, another really convincing victory against Vinch. And then in the kind of loser playoff, a second place playoff, if you like, for the, the place to go out of the group between Alex and Vinch, Vinch won it. And uh, that's where we are so far. Then the games to come later today, what are the standout fixtures for you there, Dave? Uh, well, Chris against Vitality Brian, that's going to be a tough one. Yesterday it was very close because they played each other again. And uh, yeah, for me, that one's going to be a really good one. Uh, Tass and um, Graham's going to be a tough one as well, the t um, two British players. Yeah, definitely. Lots of FIFA still to come, guys. Uh, stay tuned to the Play Like a Legend Championships presented by Xbox One. We're going to have a quick break, but we'll be back very soon. <laughs> 